we need to have a talk about performance enhancing mods. Oh dang dude! <laughs> As your 355s get older, vendors will start offering them intakes, exhausts, chips. Whoa dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never heard or felt that before in this I don't think. Make sure that they don't get into these things and that way they'll miss out on a whole bunch of fun and added performance and better gas mileage and just all the things you don't want for them. Get them on a steady diet of benzene, xylene, ethanol, various fossil fuels. That way they won't ever be able to afford these mods in the first place. talk about your neighbors parking all of their vehicles at once while you're trying to make a video on YouTube <laughs> all right so what we're doing today is we're gonna get the cat the disclaimer here is that this is an off-road only modification. I am not going to assume any liability for anything that you do to your vehicle by doing this. You need to check your local laws for the EPA and make sure that um, this is kosher with your laws. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do about as scientific way as I can possibly do for you guys. We are gonna do zero to 60 times. I don't have a dyno, I'm not gonna go spend the money and and do this for just a, a free mod like this or a, a cheap mod like this but what we are going to do is we're going to go to an undisclosed road in a country that I cannot pronounce and run this at 0 to 60 and time it via the torque app now I've got the little uh, dongle plugged into the OBD2 port and I've got the Bluetooth app the torque app on my phone and what we're going to do is check zero to 60 times in the most scientific way that I know possible. All right, test number one, here we go, to the floor. A little wheel spin. And 60. So it pulls right about the 3,500 mark to about the 4200 mark um, noticeably uh, noticeably different than the rest of it and then kind of kind of plateaus there at the 42 4300 mark and then hits 5000 5100 all the way up to six grand and it pulls a little bit more so uh, definitely um, interesting in how this thing pulls it's got uh, almost no torque out of the gate, which kind of sucks. Um, but he's on 31s on a rancher lift. Uh, we're going to probably get him onto some 33s with a regear here in a couple months when these tires go out. Um, this thing's just not set up proper for what he wants to do with it. And hopefully with the tune that I'll be doing later this episode along with uh, the cat gut that we'll be working on when I get back to the house. And hopefully we can get a little bit more power out of this thing. Uh, like I said before, the only scientific way that I can do this is by zero to 60. So currently the time to beat is 14.1. What we're gonna do is remove the catalyst from inside of the manifold to gain a net 10 horsepower dyno proven. I'll put up the graph for picture right here. What this catalyst does is it heats up very quickly. Basically, when you turn your motor on and everything's heating up, even the secondary cat, this primary catalyst heats up very quickly within the first couple seconds and it'll burn off all of the extra fuel 
that isn't being burned in the cold cylinder. So it's great for the first minute or so your vehicle's running. But I don't know about you, I run my vehicle for longer than one minute. Sometimes it, you know, a long commute is 10, 20, 30, 40 an hour, you know. So the catalyst is robbing the motor of basically 10 horsepower for the entire time the motor's running. You know, a couple percent, you know, two to two to five percent of loss here. So the 04 to 07 manifolds are a little bit different than the newer ones, and I'm not going to address those um, in a separate video. But what I will say is the secondary O2 is in the manifold on the newer trucks, uh, four or five cylinder. And what you'll need to do is actually get a O2 bung as well as the non fowlers that I'll link below for you guys. Um, you will need to have somebody weld or weld a bung behind the secondary cat for the newer motors, the 08, the 12, four and five cylinder motors. So please be aware of that. I won't address that in this uh, video because this is an 05, but uh, the rest of the process will be the same. All right, so first things first, we're gonna get our intake out of the way here. All right, so we're gonna take the trans dipstick off of here, all the 10 mils for the heat shield and the O2 sensor now. So I have 10 mil here. I'm gonna keep track of these so that I don't lose them. You can put them back on here in a sec. I like to put them up here on the little rain gutter for the back of the hood. Seems to work just fine. We're going to just gently fish this guy out of the abyss here and pull it out. I'm hoping this manifold isn't cracked already. I don't hear any exhaust leaks, but with the way this heat shield's all busted, it wouldn't surprise me. These are notorious for cracking over time with a catalyst in there. so. Let's just hope that we can remove this and not find any cracks. All right, so to get the O2 sensor out of here, we're just gonna undo the clip, tuck that up out of the way. I said tuck that out of the way. Here we go. And then just pop it off the Looks like he's got it on the zip tie because the thing failed already. So I'll just replace the zip tie for him. And I'll get my 22 mil wrench right here and pop it off. So you don't have to take the O2 sensor off right now. But it hail. In getting the heat shield off it makes it a little bit easier. You can either use a proper O2 socket or just a 22 mil wrench. And once the O2 is out, heat shield slides out pretty simple. Kind of, kind of simple. Just like that. So let's go onto the truck. I'm gonna pop the collector bolts off. Chances are those are gonna snap, but uh, We'll see if we can get those out and then we'll come back up to the top side here and we will work on the head bolts into the manifold. Well, would you look at that? We're already missing a bolt down here. Great. Now I got to figure out what that is and replace it too today. So let's get these last two bolts out of here and uh, we'll get the collector disconnected. So I haven't even gotten the socket onto the... Uh, impact <laughs> it looks to me like uh, this thing was about ready to fall off anyway I don't think the uh, top one is gonna be loose because that's about the only thing that's probably holding this thing together right now 
Yeah, nice and tight. Yeah, that guy's not even tight at all either. It was all ready to, all ready to come off anyway, so slide the flange back here and get it disconnected. And I don't want to destroy this donut gasket here if I don't have to. Just like that. Hello? All right, so we got the collector disassembled. We're gonna take out the air box. We're gonna take the mass airflow sensor and kind of tuck that away. 13 mil and a couple extensions will get you the rest of the way out of here. I guess you can just loosen that guy up and pull this all out. Maybe I'll spray this filter out with the air. Missing a dirty. Ooh. All right, let me flip the camera around and we will get you guys down inside here. All right, so these guys are notorious for breaking. So one of the things that was suggested was taking a brass drift and hitting each one of these to shock the threads and hopefully have a better shot at getting it out of there. So this is going to be an absolute challenge. To do this on a couple of them but I'm gonna do my best to get most of them and we'll see what happens last thing I need is to bust my hand open I already did that this morning So I'm going to get a breaker bar and get a uh, socket of the appropriate flavor and get this thing out of here. Alright, so we're going to get our, I think it's a 13, 13, got our breaker here, I think I'm going to try to work my way, my 13 mil and I'm going to try and do this as gently as possible. Oh boy, this is going to come out nice. Watch me, watch me break a stud. I do have easy outs. I do have screw extractors if I end up breaking these, but we're gonna do a mod here that's super cheap and it'll prevent you from ever having this issue ever again. Since these things are prone to breaking studs here or prone to breaking bolts, it's actually not a bad idea to do this, but we're actually going to install some studs here when I get this out of here. I don't want to get cocky, but I'm feeling really good about this. I'm five, six, seven. Oh my goodness. This would be a really lame video if I got all these out of here. Eight without breaking one. Nine, holy cow. Ten. Didn't break a single one. How about that? That's sketch. I found it. it was a 13 I found it so if it was a 10 that'd have been gone absolutely gone Smash your fingers, this guy's cast steel and it is heavy. So Alright, this guy's nice and heavy, so just be real careful with this and slowly remove this last bolt without smashing your fingers or 
stuff like that. I think we're there. There we go. All right, drop the gasket. We're gonna slowly, gently, carefully pull this guy out. Now turn up your heater lines, mass airflow sensor. There we go. All right, I got my safety boots on. I got some extra toys over here. And we're gonna get after this right now. All right, so what's in here is some catalyst, some fiberglass, uh, just some real bad stuff. So um, actually probably should put a mask on for this. All right. Lots of stuff you don't want to breathe, but uh, I burned all mine because you know COVID's over. So we're gonna take some instruments that can get inside here and chip and pry some stuff out. Uh, preferably smooth, so we don't destroy the threads. We're gonna come in through the bottom with some different flavors of pry bars, and we're gonna try and get all of this catalyst in here removed and I'll show you guys that process and what it takes to get this out of here should take five or ten minutes but I think I'll set this up on a time-lapse and just get after it because there's really no tried and true way of doing this other than just working it from both ends and trying to get all of the pieces small enough that they can exit here or even small enough to get out the primaries don't recommend it it's possible but uh, yeah, so let's get after this. Uh, let me get this stuff cleaned up and we're going to get back into the engine bay and we're going to set the new uh, head studs basically for the exhaust manifold. You guys can see the uh, carbon marks on here and see what the port is. Ports are tiny on these 3.5s and the 2.8s. So the 3.7 and 2.9 uh, improved a little bit on the, the head size but there's an awful lot of room to gain also on the manifold they're kind of uh, matched pretty close to this a little bit so unfortunately there's not a whole lot of room to have gains but I did port my head and it's actually a lot bigger than this I'll go over to my truck now and show you guys I'll get down inside here with my truck you guys can see a little bit the hole to the gasket get there the hole to the gasket size is a little bit closer than what the 35 this is my 37 head that I ported and polished myself many many years ago all right so I got this uh, Dorman brand set here of studs for exhaust manifolds and what they'll do is they'll thread into the holes there and now these studs aren't removable they don't they don't come out with um, when you need to remove the header or remove the manifold there's a little nut that goes on here and it's way more secure in my opinion um, there's less chance of breaking these studs I probably have two or three in my truck that have been busted out and I gotta drill those out and and do this very modification on my truck when I go to rebuild the 3.5 or 3.7. I mean, I had the opportunity to do this to this truck here and figured what better time than now to do header, head studs or header studs or exhaust manifold studs. Basically, this kit right here, I'll put a link to it below, but this is the correct size and length for uh, use on this motor. And what that'll allow you to do is install these with a socket on the end here, tighten it up nice and tight, and these aren't going to need to be removed until you really need to. What happens is 
when you go and put the manifold on, all you gotta do, tighten it down, and you're done. So let me flip the camera around here and I will get you guys down in here and I will show you how to install one of these. All right, we're gonna get ghetto here. Put a tap on my drill and we're just gonna chase these threads real quick to make sure that they are clean. Not making new threads or nothing, I'm just trying to make sure they're clean so that they take the studs in perfectly. That's all. A little bit of dust coming out of each one of these. We can't get to them all, but I'll try to get to as many as we can here. Like I said, I'm just trying to get these threads to be nice and clean for these things to set in here. So let me get these set in and we'll tighten them up. Get our new, get our new gasket, pretty gasket in here. We're gonna set it down in there, set it on top of all of our bolts, simultaneously set it down. We're gonna get this guy set up in here and line it up with all of our bolt holes, hold it in place and get a, get a nut started so it don't fall off on you. Got them started. I got a couple more. There you go. There you go. Way back here. There we go. All right. So I want to make sure these are kind of torqued up about the same rate as all the other ones. So we're just going to. Stopped, so I'm just gonna stop there and we're just gonna kind of do it like like you would lug nuts just kind of every other for a minute so there you go basically if we ever want to remove this or upgrade to a header um, or you need to pull the motor and you need to pull this guy out, whatever you got to do. 13 mil, pull the nuts off, you're good to go. I think this is a way cleaner setup. You're never going to break a stud off in this ever again. No worries. This thing has about 180 or 170,000 miles, so it's about due for something like this to break. I've had my header out a couple times and broken a bunch of studs, so wish I'd have done this years ago. Hopefully you guys can do this too when you have this out. Let's do the collector real quick, and we will bolt everything back together and do another 0-60 to 60 run and see if we gained anything before I tune it. Hi. How's it going? Let's get you guys in place here. All right, so we got the pipe in place, the gasket in place. Don't smash your fingers, that would freaking hurt. I put my new, my new ugly one up on top so we don't notice it. It's a class three metal lock. 
same I send with my all joint spacers. All right, let's go run it. Go. Little pull at five to six thousand again. Wow, look at us. Thirteen seven. How about that? So I was wrong. Made it a little quicker. By uh, what was it, 14 1 to 13 7, so not quite half a second. Don't have any sort of uh, crazy expectations of this mod, but uh, figured at least we could kind of guess uh, with, uh, um, you know, now we're at 3.7, 13.7 um, instead of the 14 1, so we gained a little bit there, not too crazy. But uh, I'm gonna run it one more time and we're going to see if uh, we can repeat that 13.7 and see what it does as this motor warms up just a little bit more. So I'm, uh, I'm working on fuel tables. I'm working on basically just porting everything over from a known good tune with a truck that's extremely similar. The thing that I will change is the tire size and gear ratio. Uh, those were different in the other truck. Um, but this will be a good known tune and a good baseline for me to kind of change uh, Ryan's settings here, my buddy's truck here, settings. And this right here makes it all worth it. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Get it? Disable. Boom. No more pass lock. Just like that. Woohoo! Right completed let's go for a run um, I increased the idle so now it'll idle at 750 or 800 uh, when it's warm um, I turned off the pass lock the vats so that's a big help for him uh, I changed the rev limiter to 100 instead of 97 or something like that um, turned off the traction assist because he doesn't have the traction off button here we just shut it down so I'm gonna see what this does right now <laughs> oops knocked over my mail all right AC on gas go Still pulls hard in, at 5,000, but we shifted out a little earlier. 14.0. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if the drivability increases throughout the rest of the the week. So first impressions on the tune basically are it's a lot smoother uh, shifting. Um, so if I remember correctly on that, the previous couple tunes that I've had, they're not harsh. They're um, they're they're firm, but they're not mushy. They're just kind of there. They're they're um, with uh, the 4060. It's kind of predictable. You can kind of feel where it's going to be. Um, but hopefully this makes it a little more fun to drive day to day. 
uh, you know, maybe we didn't we didn't gain any sort of miraculous, uh, you know, multiple seconds off of our zero to sixty time, but um, the tune that's in here is not meant for just utter all out brute force. It's to make sure that the transmission lasts as long as possible and that uh, we don't have any issues uh, with that. Uh, we did remove the torque management so that if he does want to get into it, it's uh, going to work. But Nice smooth. fun hopefully uh, hopefully he enjoys it and uh, we'll give it back to him and he can uh, enjoy it some more oh dang dude <laughs> that's crazy I've never heard or felt that before in this, I don't think. So. Right here? Full pedal. See, so you 5,000 RPM and it just starts pulling. Yeah. Now you feel it. Dang, man. <laughs> so, five, five, 6,000 RPM, it, it just sounds, loves it. Yeah, it does, huh? For a little five banger, it, it actually wakes it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's struggling or hurt to do that you know it's almost like before it was starving for air right and i think your intake helps that